Thank you, Chairman and ladies and gentlemen. Today, my topic is LA anatomy in the context of treatment of atrial fibrillation. Nowadays, the various the interventional therapeutic modalities such as catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation and left atrial appendage occlusion has been exponentially increasing in the clinical practice. Therefore, the careful understanding of cardiac anatomy must be a crucial for interventional cardiologist as well as electrophysiologist. So I'd like to talk about following contents. First is interatrial septum. Second is inner view of left atrium, especially focused on perimitral isthmus and left atrial appendage. The finally is colonial science. This slide shows the inner view of right atrium. The atrium is usually consists of four major components, including venous atrium and septum and vestibule and appendage. As you can see, the venous atrium is located posterior portion of right atrium between superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, such like this. And the vestibule is located just behind around the annulus, such like this. The appendage consists of pectinate muscle with abundant trabeculations. The fossa ovalis is just behind the core triangle. This slide shows the more detailed view of the you know, inner view of the right atrium. As you can see, the linear band-like structure is located between pectinate muscle and venous atrium, such like this. We call this linear structure a terminal crest or crista terminalis. Fossa ovalis is usually located just behind the core triangle, such like this. This is a more magnified view of the septal area. If you look at the, right, the figure on the right, the, you can see the triangle of core, which consists of the three major components. One is the AV node, compact AV node in summit, and the tendon of Todaro in posterior border, and tricuspid annulus in anterior border. The fossa ovalis, ovalis, fossa ovalis is located just behind tendon of of Todaro, such like this. Another important structure is the aortic cusp. The aortic cusp is located just above AV node in right side view and just above in the left, bun the left bundle branch in left side view, such like this. And these are fluoroscopic images of aortic cusp and AV node. Red dotted line indicates the, the core triangle, and circular dotted line indicates the coronary sinus ostium. The quadripolar catheter positioned at AV nodal area. As you can see, the non coronary cusp on RAO view and LAO view, the non coronary cusp is very close to the AV node. Therefore, you have to keep in mind that you don't, you don't perform the, the, at the superior anterior portion of septum near the AV node. This is the, the more detailed in view of the septum. The septum has two major components. One is the membrane septum and the other is muscular septum. Fossa ovalis indicates the membrane septum. As you can see, the muscular septum is much, much thicker than the membrane septum. This is a more magnified view in the membrane septum here and this is a muscular septum. If you look at the posterior membrane septum, there is an obvious enfolding structure between two layers. We call this enfolding epicardium waterstone group or sondergaard group. It contains abundant epicardial adipose tissue and sinus nodal artery. This is outer view of and the city views of Waterstone group. As you can see, Waterstone group is truly epicardial space covered with pericardium, such like this. This slide shows the direction for, of the transeptal puncture. We puncture the membrane septum here and with the posterior direction for the purpose of catheter ablation of atrial fibrillation. For atrial appendage occlusion, it is more appropriate to perform the transatal puncture with a neutral direction, such like this. However, 
Not unusually, transeptal puncture is penetrate the posterior muscular septum and enter to the waterstone groove, such like this. This, these are angiography septal transeptal puncture. The left panel shows the, the left atrography after appropriate transeptal puncture. As you can see, the left superior pulmonary vein here and left inferior pulmonary vein here. Right panel shows the iatrogenic and the pericardiography after inappropriate transeptal puncture. As you can see, the pigtail catheter is located in waterstone group and contrast media spread out from waterstone group to pericardial space, such like this. This slide shows the inner view and outer view of the left atrium. As, the, as you know, the border between the left atrium and left ventricle is a mitral valve, mitral annulus, such like this. And coronary sinus is located on the left side of the vestibule, just behind the mitral valve. This is a more detailed view, uh, inner view of the left atrium. The fossa ovalis, valve of fossa, is located between vestibule, just behind the mitral valve, and the venous component of the left atrium such like this. And coronary sinus is located on the left side of the vestibule just behind the mitral valve. Therefore, the coronary sinus is can be, can be the useful landmark for the location of a mitral valve. These are angiographies on area view and area view. Left panel shows the coronary sinus phenogram on area view and right panel shows the coronary phenogram on on LAO view. You can appreciate the obvious coronary signs on LAO view, such like this, and LAO view, such like this. You also can see, you, also you can see the posterior cardiac border in front of the thoracic vertebra here. Therefore, you can estimate the location of the fossa ovalis here between coronary signs and posterior cardiac border. This is the surgeon's inner view of the left atrium. These are orifices of left superior and inferior pulmonary vein, and this is the orifice of left atrial appendage. You can appreciate the obvious reach between the left superior pulmonary vein and the orifice of left atrial appendage. This is a mitral annulus, this is a vestibule. We call this linear line the between the anterior border of the left inferior pulmonary vein and the lateral perimetral Mitral annulus is perimitral isthmus. This slide shows the vestibules and the annulus in forced HDR. Atrial flutter is usually rotated uh, around the vestibule. Right side vestibule reentry is usually named by typical atrial flutter, and left side vestibule reentry is named by atypical flutter. Critical isthmus in right side vestibule reentry is cable tricuspid isthmus, and critical isthmus in left side vestibule reentry is perimitral isthmus. These are typical example of typical cable tricuspid isthmus reentry atrial flutter. Upper panel shows the counterclockwise rotation. Low panel shows the uh, upper panel shows the clockwise rotation, and low panel shows the counterclockwise rotation of a typical atrial flutter. As you can see, wavefront is rotated around my tricuspid valve, such like this, counterclockwise and counterclockwise. This is a typical example of the atypical perimetral reentry, clockwise and counterclockwise reentry. As you can see, the wavefront is rotated around the mitral annulus clockwisely and counterclockwisely. This is a atypical perimetral reentry. This slide shows the inner view and the outer view of the left atrial appendage. As you can see, the morphology of orifice of left atrial appendage is usually elliptical, oval shape. And anterior border of orifice of left atrial appendage is vestibule, and posterior border is wafering ridge, such like this. 
And this line is a perimetral line between anterior border of left inferior pulmonary vein and lateral perimetral annulus here. This is a T view of the left atrial appendage. As you can see, this is a Kumadin ridge or foreign ridge, and this is a circumflex artery, and this is a vestibule, and this is a valve, left ventricle, ventricle and the left atrial appendage. The distance between the warfarin ridge to between warfarin ridge and vestibule is usually represent the shortest diameter of the appendage of the ostium, the orifice, such like this. These are TEE image and fluoroscopic image of the left atrial appendage. The T image with 70 degree to 90 degree usually represent the fluoroscopic image on area cranial view. In this angle, we cannot, cannot discrimination the lobe count and lobe characteristics. These are TE image and fluoroscopic image of the left atrial appendage. This TE image on with the 110 degree to 130 degree usually represent the fluoroscope image of RAO caudal view. You can appreciate the obvious, the superior lobe and inferior lobe of the left atrial appendage. So in this angle, in this angle is more appropriate view of the lobe discrimination. Another important the point of view is the adjacent structure of left atrial appendage. As you can see, the pulmonary trunk artery is very, very close to the superior lobe of the left atrial appendage. And circumflex artery is very close to the left inferior, inferior lobe of the left atrial appendage, such like this. These are angiographic fluoroscopic images. This is the areo caudal view. And you can see the circumflex artery here, here. And this circumflex artery is very close to the inferior lobe of left atrial appendage. This area is a pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk is very close to the superior lobe of left atrial appendage. Therefore, you have to keep in mind the, these adjacent structures at the time of device landing for the left atrial appendage occlusion. Thank you for your attention.